This is Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger. The date is Thursday, July sixteen, twenty twenty. And today, I'm going to show you a couple of the best looking action figures ever made to the state. Note, I'm not saying they are a couple of the best action figures, because I think when we talk about Best action figures, best toys. It's very um, uh, widely depending on what you are looking for in an action figure. It, it's uh, everyone got their different view, their own opinion on it. But when it comes to best looking, then、uh, the focus is narrowed to there's very little room for debate. Also, I'm going to guide you through a little bit of toy and comic book history in the 1990s, and maybe this is a story of my own evolution and expectation as well. I know. The Wolverine action figure you are looking at in front of the screen is not the subject of today's Toy Thursday. Some of you are wondering what's up with the cardboard box behind Wolverine. Well, that is there for a very specific dramatic reason.、Um, actually, I've been talking it over with my girlfriend. I said, you know.、Uh, Every time I do a Toy Thursday, I have the action figure already standing there when the、uh, video starts. Maybe I can make it a little bit more dramatic by、uh, shielding it with a piece of cloth or a cardboard box, like in this case, and、I、only unveil it at the right time. Maybe this will be a little bit more meaningful. Or maybe this will just drive you guys crazy.、Uh, anyway, if you like it or don't like it, this new format of doing Toy Thursday,、uh, feel free to let me know, please. Prior to 1990s, there were only two giants in the comic book industry, as far as. Uh, North American uh, and UK readers were concerned. There were DC, DC comics,、uh, where Batman and Superman came from, and then there were Marvel comic, where we have the Fantastic Four, Captain America, Thor, Incredible Hulk. And go on and on, but you get the idea. There were a lot of other smaller comic books, comic、uh, stories, but Marvel and DC were the two. They were it. If you wanted good comic books, it's either Marvel or DC. In 1992, a disgruntled employee or ex-employee from Marvel Comic decided that since they at Marvel Comic were not giving him the freedom to draw and write the kind of story he wanted, he would leave the company. And start his own comic book. That person's name is Todd McFarlane, a Canadian comic book artist, and his creation was Spawn comic. Fast forward about thirty years, now in twenty twenty. Todd McFarlane is now holding the Guinness World Record 
for the longest running creator owned superhero comic in the whole world. His spawn comic outsold DC and Marvel in the 90s. There was a movie made by the spawn character. Uh, I believe that was 1997 or 1998, and there was a four-season television、uh, or direct-to-video. I can't remember which one. Animated series about Spawn as well. What is Spawn? Well, that is directly impactful on what we are talking about today. So I'm going to digress and quickly. Give you an explanation on what is this spawn thing in、uh, McFarlane's creation. You see, Spawn is not one superhero. Spawn is a kind of creature, a kind of warrior from hell. It is said that every one hundred years, I think it's every one hundred years. Every 100 years, the forces in hell would try to recruit a very notable human warrior and imbue that person with hellish powers, like demonic powers, in exchange for their services. How the person was chosen. Was how would pay attention to who from the mortal world died with a lot of unfinished business, and some messenger from either Satan or one of the other demon lord would then appear to this person and make the bargain with him. We would give you a new body. We would give you all this superpower. So you can go back and finish your unfinished business, but after you are done tending to your business, you have to fight in the war for us. You have to fight、uh, against the、uh, forces of heaven for us. You have to become one of hell's general. You will become spawn. For most of its run, the Spawn comic is focused on the current Spawn, which is a ex-CIA operative, an ex-Special、uh, Forces soldier by the name of Al Simon. Al Simon died in a horrific, fa a horrific fashion. He died when he was betrayed by, by his own colleague, and they、uh, shot him and. Uh, Double-crossed him and they burned him alive on one of their final missions. So it is suffice to say, El Simon died with a lot of hate in his heart, which, because of his、uh, tactical military skills and so on and so on, made him the prime candidate for hell to approach. But that is El Simon. That is the current modern. Spawn. We are not here to talk about the modern spawn. We are talking about a different spawn today. Actually, we are talking about two different spawns. In 1994, a blind teenager received his first. Wolverine action figure, which is the one you are seeing on screen right now, from X Men,、uh, A.K.A. Marvel comic. That was in 1994. This blind teenager, A.K.A. Yours truly, me, thought that this got to be it. There was. Couldn't be anything cooler than Wolverine. Here's an action figure that is very muscular and、uh, is articulated and got claws sticking out of his hands. 
and he got big knife. How cool can that be? How cool is that? This this got to be it. There couldn't be anything ever that's going to be cooler than this. That was 1994, at the height of Marvel comic, at the height of X Men, Captain America, Ghost Rider. Their action figures were everywhere. They were made by Toy Biz. Uh, back then, Toy Biz got to be like one of the biggest、uh, maker of superhero toys. Right next to Hasbro and Mattel, but most of us collectors don't count Mattel because you know Mattel just basically make Barbie and crappy action figures for the most part.、Uh, so it was down to Toy Biz, Hasbro, and then you have the runner-up as Playmates and Kenner. That was. 1994, and that was the same year that a brand new, new to the scene, a new comic artist who owned his own comic, decided that no one can make his action his characters into action figures. To his liking, so just like he did with his comic book, he decided to open up his own toy making company. That person was Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane all but redefined. The entire action figure industry by making bigger and more detailed action figures, and he didn't cater to Batman or Superman, or even just to his own creation, Spawn. He branched out and made a lot of really interesting、uh, creatures and designs. His action figures were on the top of the game, all through. The mid 90s and didn't start to fade until early 2000. For much of the early to mid 2000s, McFarlane has faded into the background, became、uh, mostly a memory from the past. The king of the action figure industry was now being forgotten and surpassed by a lot of people. However, in the last three years, we have seen a return of McFarlane. He has come back onto the scene with action figures from the famous Mortal Kombat video game and、uh, the Fortnite video game,、uh, Doom, and uh, uh, several other properties such as the One Punch Man and. Believe it or not, even Spawn action figures is making a drastic comeback. Would he be able to regain his throne and his crown as the best of action figure making? Doubtful. But even if he doesn't, McFarlane will always be one of the top contenders in the action figure collection、uh, circle because. Back in the 90s, no one made action figures like McFarlane made action figures. As I said, back then, 1994, I received my first Wolverine, and I thought that things couldn't get any better than this. That very same year, Todd McFarlane started out his own company called Todd Toys, and in 1996, when I get this guy in my hand,
there is no comparison at all. This is not even one of the more popular characters. This is Sergeant Mendoza from the Wetwork comic. The action figure was produced by Todd McFarlane in 1996 in the Wetworks toy line. Take Wolverine and standing it beside him. Wolverine just seemed so sad and small and cheap. Just look at this guy. Look at this. Look at the muscles on this, uh, this uh, Sergeant Mendoza from Wetwork. This was made in 1996. But is he what I'm? Is he who I'm talking about? One of the best action figure ever made. Or best looking? No, far from it. He is just what I'm using. To as a comparison to Wolverine. In nineteen ninety nine, four employees that worked for Todd McFarlane again redefined the entire action figure world by unveiling one of the best looking action figures ever made to date. This action figure's name is Mandarin Spawn. Now before I, I unveil Mandarin Spawn, let me give you a rundown of his bio. Mandarin Spawn started out as a blade master from ancient China. Unfortunately, despite him being deadly with a blade, he was brutally killed during the war against the invading undead. So he got eaten by zombies and skeletons. Really sad. His rage at being killed by these undead creatures drove him to bargain his soul with the forces of hell. And now, imbued with hellish power and demonic abilities, he walked the Chinese battleground again as a newly born Mandarin spawn, the Scarlet Edge, and no undead or demon can stand in his way. So this is interesting. Mandarin spawn is, is a, a, a person, a swordsman, who got killed by zombies and skeletons, and then he made a bargain with the devil, and then he used the demonic power to fight for the side of good. Really interesting. Aside from him being one of the best looking and most wanted action figures on the market right now, Mandarin Spawn have always have a soft spot in my heart because being Chinese slash Taiwanese myself, I'm always looking for impressive and great uh, Asian oriented, especially Chinese oriented action figures uh, or Chinese characters portrayed in action figures. While there's a lot of Japanese characters made into action figure form, there has been very few good looking or powerful looking or impressive looking Chinese characters made into action figures. A Mandarin Spawn here is doubtlessly one of the greatest Chinese oriented characters made into action figure form. 
So now, without further ado, let's take a look at Mandarin Spawn, the Scarlet Edge. Alexa, drum roll, please. Okay. Standing nearly nine inches tall, the Mandarin Spawn is more a piece of art than an action figure. Uh, I'm going to try to describe him for those of you who can't see the screen, those of you who are uh, blind or visually impaired. This is a dragon-like creature. His head is very pointed with a lot of horns. He has orange glowing eyes and fangs come out of his mouth. And his face is comprised of a series of diamond-shaped scales and plates. So his facial feature no longer look like a human. His facial feature look more like some kind of reptile or insect. Like I said, he's nine inches, he's about nine inches tall. Very, very slender. He's a very lean action figure. And he comes with a giant double bladed sword that is 12 inches long. There's also two more swords on his waist. And on his arm, he wears one of the most beautiful shields ever seen on an action figure. Let me get him a little bit closer to the camera. Hopefully you guys can see his shield. The shield itself is bigger than most uh, action figures of that time. Uh, let me give a quick show where did I put Wolverine. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hold Wolverine up against his shield, so you can see that, yeah, the shield is taller than Wolverine. Well, while, since I have Wolverine over here, I'm going to do a size comparison. Yeah. Standing next to the Mandarin Spawn, Wolverine is minuscule. Now there were three color uh, variations of Mandarin Spawn made. One was scarlet, so red. The other one was blue, and the other one was black. I am actually not sure which version I have here. So maybe someone can enlighten me. I really honestly can't remember. Uh, like I said, his torso is very slender. He's a tall, slender figure with uh, a sh big horn, big spike coming out of his shoulder. He also has masked faces all over his body. Let me take off his uh, shield and sword so you guys can uh, get an unobstructed view of what's going on here. He has uh, three-toed feet like a bird of prey or a uh, a dinosaur or a dragon. Perhaps the only shortcoming of this Mandarin spawn is that he's not very mobile. He's articulated uh, a bit at the arm. You can bend his arm, move his arm. Uh, to a certain degree. 
if I turn his head, uh, and the leg can move a little bit. But for the most part, he is a very tall, very imposing, but very static action figure. In 2005, six years after the smashing success of the Mandarin Spawn, who incidentally was chosen as the Toy of the Year in 1999, six years after the success of Mandarin Spawn, McFarlane's action figures were on their way out. New companies were coming onto the scene with better-looking action figures, bigger, better articulation, and so on and so on. And because of a series of bad business decisions and bad,、uh, really bad choices on McFarlane's part, Spawn action figures were not selling hardly at all. So maybe in a Move of desperation. McFarlane remembered some of his most successful creations, and he decided to re-release them in new formats, new look, new stories, to see if what worked once would work again. Among these revived action figures was Mandarin Spawn, then called. Mandarin Spawn Number Two. There were a lot of skeptical people. How can you improve upon perfection? Would it be possible to come up with a Mandarin Spawn that is even cooler, better than the first one? The story behind the second Mandarin Spawn was more tragic. Well, I mean, the first one was really tragic too. Being killed by zombies and skeletons definitely not a、uh, walk in the park. But the second story, even sadder. The story goes in the Song Dynasty in China. The imperial court was ruled by a tyrant. This tyrant demanded all the surrounding villages and kingdoms come and pay tribute in gold and silver every year. Otherwise, he would invade them. One of these villages was so poor that they didn't have any gold or silver or food. To pay tribute to the tyrant, so instead they gave him a creature of curiosity. They gave him basically what amounted to the、uh, their vi-、uh, village idiot. The person's name was Chen Lei. Chen Lei was a freak. He was covered in warts and disgusting growths, and he had a strange condition that he could not feel pain. So poor Chen Lei became the tyrant's favorite、uh, toy for a time being. They would cut him, they would burn him, they would、uh, put him in boiling oil, and they would、uh, cut off pieces of his body. Just to see that he really couldn't feel any pain. Finally, one day during one of these disgusting and gruesome play sessions, the tyrant's own general fired an arrow at the slave Chen Lei, and the arrow pierced his heart. 
Even though Cheng Lei wasn't able to feel pain, he still died because he was just a human. Just because he couldn't feel pain doesn't mean they didn't affect him. Cheng Lei ended up in hell, and because of a whole lifetime of being used as slave and idiot and entertainment, he had a lot of hatred in his heart. So the devil approached him, offered him his chance for revenge, if he would agree to become the Mandarin Spawn. Armed with demonic power, Chen Lei came back to this world as Mandarin Spawn Number Two, and he single-handedly went back to. The emperor's palace, and killed every person there except one, the old storyteller, who had always been kind to Chen Lei when he was alive. Mandarin Spawn left the storyteller alive before leaving the palace behind him, and was never seen again. Legend has it that he. Gathered around him an army of the best Chinese warriors, and took them to hell, and defeated the devil there, and the Mandarin Spawn himself started to become the hell's ruler after that. So, was this Mandarin Spawn better than the first one? You'll be the judge. Immediately, you would notice that Mandarin Spawn Number Two is a heck of a lot bigger than Mandarin Spawn Number One. The original Mandarin Spawn was already really big and tall and、uh, impressive, but Mandarin Spawn Number Two definitely got more bulk on him. Though a lot of the details have changed. We still have the diamond-shaped, plated face, the pointy, horned head, the orange eyes, the fangs from in his mouth. But this time, this guy's sporting a lot more muscles. He still has the giant spike. On his shoulder, and he has on his knee pad dragon head. His coloration is a combination of all three version of the first Mandarin Spawn. He has、um, blue and red、uh, on his torso, on his body. And his armor、uh, is primarily gold. Unlike the weapons, the many blades and shield、uh, the first Mandarin Spawn has, this Mandarin Spawn only has one weapon. But his weapon is very true to Chinese origin. This weapon in his hand, this is called a Pu Dao. This is a Kind of sword that was used to fight a horse riding invader. Back in Chinese history, one of the biggest enemy to Chinese people was the Mongolians. Mongolians were、uh, really hard to defeat on horseback, so Chinese people invented this long-handled sword called the Pu Dao, as you see here, held by the Mandarin Spawn. It usually would take two people. To hold this, and what they would do is they would hide in the trenches by the by the road. And when the horse riding Mongolian come, the Chinese warriors would stand up, rise out of the、uh, ditch or the trenches, and they would sweep this long blade across the ground and cut off the legs of the horses. And 
the horse would fall down, and then the Chinese swordsman would then finish off the Mongolian. So the Piu Dao is a very true traditional Chinese weapon on this Chinese uh, demonic warrior. There's one thing that definitely rank this Mandarin Spawn above the first one is that he has a lot more movement in his body. Arm move in and out, elbow, even the armor on his shoulder is uh, jointed. His torso can move, his head, his feet, and his leg. And he's in a lot of, uh, he, the pose he's in is a lot more cool than the first one. The first Mandarin Spawn stands very straight. Uh, like he's just standing there waiting for some evil doers to do their thing so he can go into battle. Now this Mandarin Spawn, Mandarin Spawn's second, he is um, in a, a backward lunge and don't know if you guys can see it, but he's actually beckoning with his right hand, like, come on. And uh, while he sweeps his sword out to the side, it's a very dynamic looking action figure. Very solid. Very, very cool. Producing Mandarin Spawn the second was a smart move for Todd McFarlane, because this Mandarin Spawn in many ways outshine the first Mandarin Spawn and now both Mandarin Spawns are some of the most wanted action figures in the world and both of them rank up there as some of the best looking action figures in the world even in 2020. Before I go, let's do a, a brotherly reu reunion of the two best looking spawn figures and two of the best looking action figures ever made. The two Mandarin spawn. <laughs> the platform is not wide enough. I have to watch, I don't drop them because. If I break one of these, I would crop. I really would. So, there you have it. Thank you for checking out today's Toys Thursday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Fitness Friday. For now, have fun, be safe, and have a good night.